Alrighty then. My goodness, what a series of events is happening in 2022 that is absolutely mind-blowing at this point. Um, but what I want to talk about is inflation, the cost of food, the cost of energy, and the cost in gas. There's no other word for it except explosive, okay? The explosive rise in the cost. We have to consider to make changes in our personal lives due to the fact that the USA is at a point of a 40-year high inflation. It is absolutely mind-blowing, and it's going to affect you in every single area of your personal life. But if you can make some changes to the way that you spend money and purchase food and trips in your vehicles, including your teenagers, your spouses, and your family members who you may provide those things for, we can help offset those costs without finding ourselves with credit card debt at an astronomical level. All it takes is effort and planning. What's happening in the Ukraine is absolutely not just affecting us, but the whole world. When you consider that Russia exports 18% of the world's wheat production and Ukraine 25% of it, the startling fact right now is that wheat products that are out in circulation are out in circulation right now. Consider that wheat is in almost everything. Of course, you know the basics, pasta, cereal. Did you know it's in soy sauce? It's in your condiments, your salad dressing, etc. We all know about flour, okay? And you don't need a fancy Tupperware to store your flour or your wheat berries that you might grind. I have a hand grinder. You can use things that you already have, simply don't throw away these food safe containers. We know that in the hindsight of 2020, there's plenty of words you know we all can't say, uh, making a video. On top of all this, the 40 year high inflation, the war situation that's gonna affect us all, but we had trouble in 2020 finding yeast. When we would go to the store after staying home for a period of time, there was very little on the shelves that may have been on our grocery list. So to go through this after that two year period to suddenly where we feel, whew, things are getting better, 40 year high inflation, 40 year high inflation in our country is not better. But let's talk about ways we can offset that simply by becoming stricter with our spending habits. And it takes your entire family to do it. And if you're the adult in your family, you have complete control over what your teenagers spend if they share a debit card or a visa with you. So don't think my family will never do it. You've got to get your family to make these changes or your debt is going to be crippling like that. Ain't nobody got time for that. Ain't nobody need that kind of debt. So, but it is not too late for any of us to start in the house we're in, in the area we're in, to help offset these costs to not get ourselves in crippling debt. So most everyone knows that we're food storage enthusiasts. We home can, pressure can, water bath can food. We dehydrate, we keep a stocked pantry, and it's just what we do. So you don't have to be a canner or a dehydrator. You just have to know how to effectively, effectively stockpile your pantry with the foods that your families eat. So your money is buying less, whether it's purchasing a new house or a new car, your money is going to buy less. It's gonna cost you much more. So the reason to conserve money and food right now we have been through two years of shortages and they're not gonna get better. And of course, now we have inflation. Anything that is in my pantry now, whether it's um, yeast, whether it's flour, soy sauce, any condiments, 
were purchased when they were on sale. Uh, soy sauce, I can have six or seven of them in my pantry. If I buy them today, I'm gonna pay way more than this one when I got it on sale or a buy one, get one, even seven months ago. But we only store food that we eat. With gasoline, we're starting, and everyone should, you and your husband have a car, your teenager has a car, start controlling what your trips are. If you, we went through this in 2008. So if I was gonna go to the grocery, swing by the dry cleaner, maybe go by a home improvement store to pick up some soil, I would not do those on different days. I'm gonna hit that grocery store, I'm gonna swing by the dry cleaner, and I'm gonna go to that home improvement store in one trip. And I may not drive 35 minutes to my favorite home improvement store. I may go to the one closer so that I'm burning less gas. I have talked about this before. Another way to save a huge amount of money is stop those convenience trips. Uh, if your husband is used to swinging in to a convenience store for a honey bun and a, a Coca-Cola for he goes to work and then lunch he hits one of those meat and three vegetable places to eat with his buddies. That is two different stops, right? And two different drive times for him, burning more gas. Consider taking lunch. Don't swing into a convenience store to get a honey bun and a Coca-Cola or a Gatorade buy those in bulk, buy those from the grocery store, take them with you. So there are all kinds of ways that you can offset these costs. Look at your debit card statement. Likely it's online for you. We pay cash for things. If I'm gonna, I will never in my life pay $8.50 for a cup of coffee at Starbucks. Because if I did, and I'm getting a Danish also, I'm gonna be handing over a $20 bill. If you make $10 an hour, you work two hours for that 20 bucks. Is it worth it to spend $12 for that convenience when I can make my coffee at home, put it in a thermos, in an insulated cup, and take it with me? Those are the things that if you look through your debit card and you see Starbucks and your convenience store where you're not getting gasoline, Look at those things. Did you swing into McDonald's or Burger King? There is money that you are spending that you can stop spending so that you can put it into the rising cost of food that then will let you make food at home. So if you get rid of your fun spending, your convenience spending, you can find the money that will help you offset the cost of food and don't forget your electricity rates are going up. So one of the important things we've always done because we both worked is we have a weekly menu. What we're eating, say you go to the store every Thursday. We're gonna make meals from Thursday to Wednesday that are lined out. That's what we're going to eat. So generally they correspond to the flyer at the grocery store with what is on sale. In these last two years, what they might say on sale, they don't even have in stock. So we've had to be more flexible. So based on that week's menu is what our grocery list is. You know, from produce, to can, to meats, to miscellaneous. So that's what we are buying. So it helps us to control our impulse buying. Also look at the things on your statement for your debit or checking account that show Hulu, uh, Netflix, Spotify, any of those types small, as we say, it's only $4.99 a month, $5.99, $9.99. And chances are when you add up those small items that you're somewhere around the $75 per month that you're spending on some entertainment items. We even have an entertainment uh, budget, which would be one of those things on our spreadsheet. So you have to look at those things and you may have to eliminate them because if you attempt to go on as you have been with making no changes with this 40 year high inflation, you're gonna very quickly drown in debt or have a visa card up to its limit. 
So start making, recapturing some of that money that you're using on convenience or entertainment to put towards the rising cost of gasoline, diesel, propane, natural gas, and of course food. Start to focus on that. So this has to be a whole family event. And if you cannot work as a team with your spouse, you need to sit down at your dining room table and have a low church and get with the program so that you can see your family through this months long or years long storm that's coming so that you can continue to pay your basic things to keep a roof over your head, which would be mortgage, rent, keep a refrigerator running in your house, all those things. So do not think this will be short and not painful. And again, what the goal is, we wanna talk about ways to conserve money with smart food storage, uh, keeping a stocked pantry, along with planning and budgeting of things that of these can be applicable to anyone. Hey, Vern. Hey, I must have married the smartest girl in the world. <laughs> or pretty close to it. <laughs> and and she brings out some good points, um, really good points. You gotta uh, pay attention, okay? But she's right on about um, saving money and ways to conserve money. I just wanted to expand on uh, a few things. How do we deal with higher costs? A, a lot of people don't know well, where, where to start and, and they get uh, bogged down in the details. So I say, um, if if you're challenged with uh, higher costs, you can go you can go on offense, or you can go on defense, or um, as I recommend, you do both. And but what I mean by offense is look at ways to increase your your income. Okay, get a maybe get a second job to get a promotion or a raise, and reduce your debt. Okay, cut that debt down because that's chewing into your um, disposable income. Yet your your debt cuts into your disposable income, which is basically the, your money when you take your revenue or your income and subtract all your expenses. Hopefully you've got something left over and that's your disposable income for luxury items. So you want to start with, you first you want to start with an overall goal. All right, and, and I I say um, make it 80% of your revenue goes to spending uh, expenses, 10% um, to savings, and 10% to investing. And, and if you can't uh, start out at, at those, those are decent rates, but uh, then make it 90% spending, 5% savings, 5% investing, and then move to the 80, uh, 10, and 10 because you got to look out for your future and deal with this you want to do whether you've got inflation or not. Um, now you've got a plan for your family to deal with the future. And then you got to get organized, by, and I like to make a worksheet where you track your, um, your budgets and your cost. And you can find different uh, types on the internet that will help you track your, make it specific. Uh, to yours, and then you'll know where your money is going, and that's very important. And and then you go to uh, that's part of your defense. Also, is setting up a plan. Okay, make uh, tracking and controlling your budgets, managing that uh, um, honestly, and look to cut out or uh, reduce your spending on luxuries. And. And by luxuries, what I mean is anything that's not an essential basic need, okay, put that in the category of luxuries. And be honest with yourself, you know, do you really need that, that other uh, honey bun, that, that Starbucks, that trip to the bar, um, whatever it is. Um, reduce your um, eating, don't eat out as often. Maybe there's, there's ways where you can cut down on your expenses all right, and you can use that to either save, invest, or deal with the higher costs of uh, gasoline, heating your house, all that, all that stuff. And and also, uh, my last point is get get yourself out of debt. Okay, work yourself out of debt, and you can use the money you were paying to the debt to um, increase your savings and investment. 
because that's going to be important. But if you're if you've got uh, maxed out credit cards, then you're you're living over your means, and and the key to this is living. Um, I say not even living within your means, but living slightly below your means. At uh, with an eighty percent spend, you can save and invest ten percent, and that's important, especially if you're young and uh, you got ideas about buying a house and and um, being able to build a nest egg. So and the other thing, you have to have some money in savings. You're always going to run into issues. Um, at our age, it could be a Jethro boot because, you know, we have to go to the doctor, do a copay, uh, get our ankle in a boot. Uh, your kids could need stitches. You could. So you're always going to have some copays. You have to have some money somewhere put aside for those things. So there are always going to be things that are out of your control. Uh, you could have a blowout on your tire and have to get a new one. So just have something put aside to do it. But do something. Do not keep doing what you've been doing before this skyrocketing gas, diesel, and propane cost and groceries and think, oh, it's only going to be for a temporary amount of time. And there's, a, there's an old joke about um, how to cook a frog. Okay, you don't take a frog and you don't drop him in hot water because he's going to jump right back out, all right? What you do is you put him in lukewarm water and then you turn the heat up so he doesn't notice the gradual increase. And that's what happens with, it's, we, we really refer to it as inflation, but it's also devaluation of the, yeah. of the dollar, where a dollar doesn't go as far. That's how you get cooked like a frog is you don't notice it because it slowly creeps and compounds year after year, and that's why you need to have a plan, okay, to deal with that. And you need to save and invest your money and then make smart decisions with your food budget by setting them in. You go to the grocery store once a week and then uh, force yourself in that kind of discipline. Make a list and stick to it. Look for, uh, shop at multiple grocery stores. The stockpiling lets you gives you the opportunity to wait for sales. That's the key thing for us. I, I can wait until a product, I, I do most of the shopping, and I can wait till a product goes on sale and then pick up a few because I have a few on hand. So I don't have to buy retail, all right? And you buy like um, the Coca-Cola packs that she likes, retail, they're $6. But when they go on sale, it's three for 11 or or three for 12. That's a much better deal. I'm saving $2 a box right there. And that's, that's the kind of smart shopping you can do. And there's no sense, that's my theory, every pound is me prisoner. <coughs> and, um, there's no, spend, no sense spending more money than you need to, okay, for things that you have to have. Mm -hmm. And everybody in your family has to do their part. If your husband is a plumber or an electrician or a landscaper, your spouse, I'm just going to say your husband, he has no choice but to drive to those job sites, whether he's gasoline-powered truck or diesel. It's up to you as the spouse to really help to make that money available for him to have that money to go to those jobs to provide your family's income. So you need to really tighten up on the food that's in your house and the types of things that you eat so you can really manage the income that he's bringing. Even if you work also, you have to really control what comes in. You can't control that. A salary is a salary often, but you can control what it is used for in foods. Maybe you won't eat as many steak and baked potatoes at home but you need to stretch those dollars. And you can, even in this inflation and skyrocketing food costs. But you have to make an effort and you have to do it as a team. Yes. We're a team. Yes, you can do it. And if you've, after you've listened to this video and if you say, I can't do it, okay, maybe the real thing is, um, I really don't want to do it. You know, I don't want to make those changes in my lifestyle. I like... Uh, doing certain things. Well, I do too, all right? But there's called there's things called delayed gratification. And um, if you're um, up to your eyeballs in debt, you're, you're in trouble and it's only gonna get worse. 
with the inflation and your devaluation. So you got to have a plan. So if you're used to getting your hair did every four weeks, I used to color get my hair colored for 175 a month. I stopped that back in the day where uh, gasoline was expensive. I think it was 2008. You don't have to get your nails did. Okay, so there's all kind of mani petties and things that you can take out that are not things you have to have. Uh, Vern has been very lucky as I have never been a high maintenance chick. My idea of high maintenance is maybe getting me a new kayak, okay? And I like the best hooks and I like a really sweet fishing rod, but I don't have any other luxuries. And like he says, those are investments. I go out there and I catch fish, okay, that we freezer bank in our freezer. He goes out there and catches a mess of crabs uh, through the season. And again, we put those into our freezer. So you're gonna have to give up on some things. Oh no, I gotta get my hair did, I gotta get my nails did. You ain't gotta do nothing. And that's the truth. So become part of a team in controlling these expenses because I will not stress burnout more than I need to. He got us here retired. He's gotten us through some of the toughest economic times and I will not be a ball and chain to him. So become a team with your spouse and get your family on board. Let your teenage or pout, don't worry about it. Nobody can get with it, cut them off that debit card. Put your pants on, be a big girl or boy and lead your family through what's coming. Cause it's here, it's not just coming. Excuse and it's, me. And it's, well, it's fun. She's, she's absolutely right. I call her the bank. I can give her $20 and <laughs> come back a week later. And she's still got that 20. And he'll need it. But, um, you know, we, we had fun working together as a team and we play to each other's strengths. That's important too. She's better organizer than, than I am. Okay. But she lets me do most of the managing of the budgets. And, uh, but she, I, she's tied into all the major financial decisions. Also, I, I let her know, um, you know, when we're, when we're doing what, and she keys me in on something that uh, she needs and we check we check for the right time. Mm -hmm. Certain months are more expensive than others because of uh, things like car insurance and, and things. So we, we manage it and, and working together, it's fun because you, when you accomplish your, your goals together, it builds a bond. Yes. Mm -hmm. And you mess with Vern, I kill you. Okay. So I don't mess with Vern and mess him up. And he knows he's got a great cheerleader behind him. And it's up to the two of us at age 65 Okay, on a, what do you call that? Kind of budget that says Fixed income. Fixed income. Yeah, yeah. Big, two big words I didn't know. On a fixed income to be able to navigate this. And I'm not going to let him stress, be stressed out because we're grown people. But it's also why we can to hydrate. He gets all the garden soil and stuff going for me. He does the manly stuff. Then it's up to me to keep the stuff uh, growing out there that we can then put into cannon jars. So that's how we choose and why we got two acres out here that we could do a lot of these things ourselves. But we are not getting younger, and, and that's the truth. So we're gonna work as a team, and we're gonna kick butt going through this. And we don't have a victim mentality. No. We, we deal with uh, whatever cards were dealt, and we manage those. And that's why I say, go on offense as well as defense. Look for ways to increase that revenue. All right, that'll help you offset some of those expenses too and, and keep an eye on the future. Mm -hmm. And the other thing is do make, like you said, every pounds me prisoner, you've heard me say, I'll make a quarter, choke up a dime. You know, I used to be able to make it choke up 20 cents. Now it's about 10 cents. Do your part. Think about everything that you spend because times are not getting easier. Food is not gonna go down. Gas is, uh, diesel, whatever, is not going to go down. Help each other. Do it as a team, and you're, do, you're setting a great example for your family with teenagers or a mother-in-law who lives with you, whatever your situation is. And, and a lot of what we're telling you is from experience. Yes. Okay? And my favorite saying <laughs> is, good judgment comes from experience. <laughs> uh, experience comes from bad judgment. Yeah. All right, so we've, we've learned the hard way, but there are ways to uh, deal with the inflation and, and increase your purchasing power and, and also your uh, safety net. 
And don't say, oh, but they don't understand I live in snow country. When he said there are specific months that, <clears throat> excuse me, expenses come up, where wind, hail, and flood is something that we pay, as well as full replacement homeowner's insurance, because we live in a hurricane zone. So if our roof is ripped off, right, we just lost our solar, we lost everything in our house. So those are expenses that are unique to us in this area. But we knew those expenses when we built a house here. People live in a tornado alley, all those things. So don't think, oh, but our situation's different. Money is money. Keeping a roof over your head and your families is just the basics of life. So you know what your expenses are. Now capture everything you've been wasting. What you got? <laughs> That's it. That's it.